Welcome back to the State Shield coverage for 2022. I'm Scott, joining me here today on the desk, I've got Nathan Morton. G'day Scott, good to be here. Yeah, good to have you. Look, so this is the segment that we sort of planned a little bit earlier. Uh, we're looking at cha changing positions because obviously yourself, four-time drop bear player, is, is it four or five now? Uh, four-time representative. Yeah, four-time. Yeah. You've played beta twice and you've played on the quaffle twice now. Yep. So as someone that has played at the highest level multiple times, played with Victoria, what, every time they've... Every game, yep. yep. Every, time, every time they've been attended a tournament, as well as you've played in both positions at both levels of representation, we just wanted to get a bit of a take from you on how you... um On how the... Sorry, I just get my notes up. But how you can go about changing positions? So, like, let's just start off. How did you get your starting quidditch, Nathan? For if you, I'm assuming you've been asked this question a fair few times over the years. Yeah, it's good. Good story. Uh, I stumbled across the Monash Muggles University team. Yep. They were training on on one of the lawns around the uni. Yep. Um, and I saw the hoop set up first. Yep. That was the thing I recognized. Yep. And I immediately decided, like, that I'm playing. That's yeah. the game for me. I, I know I know what that is and I'm gonna I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, understandable. And so which position did you start in when you started playing? I uh, kinda took one look at beating when I started and I was like, hmm, bit complicated. Uh, at that time in the sport it was very in vogue for your beaters to essentially not participate in offense. So yep. if you if you had bludger control, you just sat back at your hoops and, and protected the bludger control. Yeah. And um, I'm a bit of a glory seeker. I like scoring goals. Um, <laughs> it's always fun to play the ball hoop game. Exactly. I, I want I want the glory. I want the I want the the winning. I want to be you know the guy who does the thing. And, and I was like, Chaser, that's the one I want to be. Absolutely. Yeah. No, understandable. So, yeah, you started out in chasing. Um, and it was a while ago, but the pathway into the drop bears, what sort of, like, pathway was that initially? So, it was a little bit lucky for me early on. I, um, I didn't... I got to train a little bit with the with the Mulls before mm -hmm. my first game, first tournament. Yeah. And I and I've got to play a couple of Victorian League games before my first uh, quaffle in 2013, long time ago now. Yep. Um, but essentially, we rocked up in 2013, and we were like, "Yeah, let's like let's go get them, have a good tournament." Um, and we did all right. Yep. Um, but. There was definitely like a lot of talent around, absolutely. Um, and then at the start of next year, um, a couple of people really encouraged me to put my name down for the for the Drop Bears who were going to Canada. Yep. Um, and I had to submit film of me playing, and I had to uh, like justify my reasons, like what like what makes me a good fit for the team yeah. uh, because there were no tryouts in these days. Yeah, there were gotcha. no tryouts. We yeah. didn't do anything of that sort. Yeah, some of the earlier days of Quidditch the in Australia. The really early days yep. of Quidditch in Australia. Um, so just based on that, I it was based on basically the, the couple of games I played in Victoria and and the one quaffle. I did not make the team. Yep. I made reserve. Yep. Um, however, fortunately for me, one of the chasers dropped out and uh, I was invited to come along. Um, and so I got to go to Canada. Yeah, hey. <laughs> you, if you, if you, it's all about timing in international sports. Like, if you get an injury at the wrong time, that's... That's it. It's, it's heartbreaking, but it's, it's someone else's game. Yeah, I mean... And you've taken that and... Grab and the opportunity and, with both hands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, you, you started at chasing and, like, what was the thought process as to, like, so obviously you played for a fair few years as a chaser. Yep. And then you've moved, look at, looking at beating, like, what was the thought process? Like, were, was it a, was there a, um, trying to revitalise your play? Was, like, what, what was the thought process there? What led you to beating? So it was a couple of things. Firstly, as I learned more about the game, I, I wasn't, quite as as gung ho and I like like played myself into the game, tried to understand it a little bit more. 
Um, but as time went on, the chasing group at the Muggles was yep. quite strong. It was very strong. And we'd lost actually a couple of beaters. Mm -hmm. um, and so as one of the more senior players at that point, I, I was like, okay, I think I understand enough about this to, to, to give it a go. Um, but the other thing that happened in 2016 when I started beating mm -hmm. was I got to go to the World Cup again for the second time with the Drop Bears. Yep. And the US had, at this point, already kind of figured out that you could really use the bludgers in a very effective way on offense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and getting to see that firsthand of being like, oh, I don't need to be like this sort of passive observer of the game. I can get involved and I can do different things and be, be, a, be more involved. I can, yeah. I can really make a start of it, so. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. The That 2016-ish era was where, yeah, the Americans showed us that your two bludger players don't have to be females. You can make impacts in the bludger position, or the beater positions. And so, yeah, you've ch you've changed over to beating and take and run with it. And now you've played two, well, two times at World Cups with in a beater position. Um, is there anything that helped you change into that beater position to prepare you for a high level play? Yeah, so definitely like watching other beaters go about it was yep. huge. Um, Luke Derrick obviously has been a, a beater in Australia for a long time. Yep. Um, watching like Max Havlin and um, uh, Michael Duquette and co at, uh, at the World Cup in 2016. Uh, I also got to see a bunch of their beaters in 2014 doing stuff. Um, and I was also like getting my own ideas at this time, like being a lot of beaters at that time were running up with the Quaffle Carrier and I decided I'd make the decision. I was going to go up first. Yeah. <laughs> like, put myself right in the middle of everything and, and if I could cause, you know, the huge kind of spill that was going to go on, uh, it would give our chasers a lot of time to take advantage of that. Absolutely. And I guess, yeah, that's where sort of that trading bludgers for goals mentality started to really foster. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not sure if it was a around that time for the US or, or um, maybe, yeah it was, it was, they talked about it um, being a thing at, at 2016 World Cup yeah. and it's, yeah, it's been been like, it's one of the, the primary things that you, you start to learn as, as a beater and like maybe, maybe it's not something that you think about as much as a chaser, but it's like, yeah, you absolutely would just start trading bludges and, and giving up a lot in order to get a few seconds even. Yeah, absolutely. Players. For sure. And look, I know you are a beater at the moment. Is there one that you prefer over the other or are you happy to flex into whatever role you needed? I'm very happy to play almost, to play any position. Um, yep. For Victoria, I've played in all four positions. I, yep. I love playing all of them. Yep. Um, at the moment, I'm a keeper because uh, I feel I can be a really strong keeper for Victoria. And, yeah. Um, well, you've hope. definitely proven that throughout the tournament. Like, I found myself commentating your games and saying the name Nathan Morton repeatedly as being involved in players. You're still, you're all, all up there playing out of that keeper position. And yeah, no, you absolutely bring that to the Victorian team, I've yeah. um, I I'm, I was going to say, I think maybe I enjoy beating, but possibly now that two-handed tackling is being introduced into the game, it, it might be... It might be the chaser game that's my favourite because I love, I love a good tackle. Yeah, so no, this is an interesting point that your teammate Nicola has brought up is that this feels more like, as myself as a beater as well, we feel more that this is tech towards beaters being able to play because of that, because of the way that the mechanics of it is you can't push someone from behind. Yeah. Whereas a lot of beater play gets, is sort of that stationary one versus one engagement you feel that that's more ge geared towards chasing and I don't necessarily think it's play. geared towards chasing in particular but it's something in your toolbox. it's it's for, for me I'm not the hugest guy going around tackling big players is, is quite difficult Absolutely. with one arm for, for a small player but with two arms it's eminently much more achievable and I've laid several tackles on people this weekend that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do Absolutely. with one arm um, whereas for beaters being able to tackle from behind is a huge change yes um, 
but the the bludger is still a mighty weapon against yeah, tackling. Absolutely. And I'm not certain that it's going to have as big an effect on the beta game as it will on the quaffle game. The two arm tackling, the tackling from behind, I think, will be a thing. Yeah. But two arm tackling versus one arm tackling in the bludger game maybe remains to be seen. No, that's good insights from someone that I would expect to know and understand how to work this in. But thank you so much for your time there, Nathan. I'm going to let you go as I believe you guys are... We will be... Helping refing. out with refereeing with this. Look, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Scott. And thanks for giving this interview. No worries. Thank you very much.